Welcome. You are now listening to 90.7 WKKL, the Cape's commercial-free alternative. If you tuned in last Saturday at this time, you heard our first run-through of The Bard's Tale, a script reading performed by the Janus Players Theatre Club of Cape Cod Community College. For the remainder of this hour, we'll be presenting it here for you again, should you have the time to enjoy it. This story is a tragedy, one of poetic drama. In its rhyming verses, this tale tells of power and lust, rivalry and trust, hatred and love, and how all of the above can afflict even those who may be just. And it might, quite possibly in time, ignite in you the desire to write something Shakespearean-inspired too. The co-writers of this play are Joseph Koslerich and Jamie Allen Horton. The Janus players, soon to be reading it, are Mark Stone as Israfel the Bard, Jamie Allen Horton as Peter the Knight, Remy Waglin as Simon the Squire, Joya Sabatinelli as Sylvia the Sylph, Andrea Harris as Angelina the Peasant, Nicole Taylor as Gabrielle the Good Lady, Lauren Helena Johnson as Miriam the Naiad, Emily Entwistle as Mammon the Demon, Jeremy Hill and Eddie Marceau as the Footpads, and I, Cameron Hall, will be playing the sound effects and musical accompaniment behind it. So please, lend us your ears, and may all of your cares this day be trodden underfoot. This is The Bard's Tale. This lute has stories I could ill contain of all those nigh forgotten days of old. Romantic yearns and those of boundless pain, not one intriguing tale it leaves untold. Lo, a lamentable account for ye of fiery envy, hate born wrath, and pride, and how those tins brought two friends tragedy, and by their own hands violently would die. The wood was deep, the light above was dim, when brave Sir Peter rode atop his steed. Not far behind, Squire Simon followed him. Both hurried to the chase with goodly speed. Their dogs had overtaken some fleet brute, and Simon had drawn back his stout yew bow. But sunlight had died during their pursuit, the unshadowed shape they did not truly know. Was this red-haired beast to be their quarry? Behold, as I unfold the grim story. Enter Sylvia, pursued by hounds. The hounds have the brute cornered, my good friend. Ah, alas, that chases ever have to end. Dismount then, lad, and let us have a look. Be like the fox our dogs have overtook. Enter Peter and Simon. Nay, lord, or have such long and bonny locks as these e'er graced the head of a mere fox? This dark-eyed lass, perfect in her beauty, the goddess of love, in truth, she must be. Alas, the face of Venus I have not. Would an Olympian by hounds be caught? I pray thee, do restrain these murderous things. Already they have torn to shreds my wings. Simon calls off the hounds. Heed me, my squire, and swiftly come away. Hast thou no knowledge of these wicked fay in forests lurking, clad in human dress, professing to be damsels in distress? Much woe befalls the travelers they charm, who, without fail, have always come to harm. Now, get thee back, so I might slay this tart, and thus I'll rid the world of her black heart. A fell seductress and a fiend am I. Your baseless charge I fervently deny. Vile temptress, waggeth not thy forked tongue. A demon thou art, though thou seemest young. Peter draws his sword. I beg you, peace. Sir Peter, are you mad? This helpless woman, bruised and sparsely clad, would be the victim of your deadly blade? So sure are you of her dark masquerade? A fay, you're human. How are we to know? And if your guess is wrong, how great our woe. You order me back while this lass your slay? That's a command, sir, I shall not obey. Simon draws his sword. Control thyself, my young, untested squire, if rank of knighthood be your sole desire. Trust in my judgment, and thou shalt be saved. Guard well thine heart now, lest it be enslaved. You know that I shall never be a knight, for noble blood is not an airy white. And what's this ludicrous display of rage directed at this girl of tender age? You think a curse on us she'll surely bring? Sheer balderdash. I shall do no such thing. Simon helps Sylvia to her feet. How fairest thou, my lady of the wood? Thy touch is as soft as thine heart is good. I'm well, though my wings be destroyed. 
Alas. No finions thou hast, I swear by the mass. They are the pride of every sylph, my lord. Ere dawn's bright kiss thou shalt see them restored. The wench admits it now. She's a damned fay. I'll not hide this fact. It is as you say. Ah, uh, buried is the glory of my race, forced into hiding in their false disgrace. Our craft your folk no longer understands. Unseen, unloved, we dwell throughout your lands. Small, blessed custodians of ancient powers, maintaining this great world of sweets and sours. Good sir, please put away your cruel blade. Give ear to me and let your anger vade. I'll smith you countless coins and sweetest wine. Yea, naught's impossible for powers divine. Thy sentence of swift death shall be removed when by thy spells my fortunes are improved. But if a cunning trick this proves to be, thy head above my gate the realm shall see. Yet doth bold knights with gleaming treasure hoards have need for wishes? Tell me, what do lords whose every thirst is slaked both night and day dare ask for when met by a crafty fay? And loyal Simon, always by my side, a better servant no king could provide. Therefore, I can no larger wealth possess. Save flattery, my lord, for the noblesse. Methinks that proud Sir Peter doth conceal an awful truth. But this I'll not reveal. Yea, I'll press him no further, yet remind my lord he'll not a better offer find. I swear to Jove I'm up to any task. Then one thing I reluctantly would ask. My wealth, it dwindles down to all but none. Though once my treasury shone like the sun. My greed, like a wild horse, would not be reined. Most of my power I skillfully have feigned. Because of this, I'd have abundant gold. My coffers fill as much as they can hold. Grant my request, and things shall be put right. Your wish is hereby granted, noble knight. Oh, fie on thee, fell sprite. I'm not so daft. Such spells are simple, if one knows the craft. What reason would I have to lead you wrong? Make still thy serpent tongue, foul Lilith spawn. Sylvia magically produces a small bag and hands it to Peter. My lord, inspect this sample. Look within. Accepting fairy gifts is not a sin. What's this? Real gold! An alchemist thou art. Uh, perchance there are some elf folk good of heart, but none, I trow, as beautiful as you. One wish remains, for you, sir, may have two. Ah, King Midas changed all he held to treasure and wept. Robbed of all sensual pleasure. Lord, muse on that, and of your greed repent. Wish fully from the soul, and be content. Thy wisdom is a gift from God above. A man who hath much wealth, yet hath not love, is certainly bereft of life's true joys, creating not, and soon good things destroy. Nymph. I shall surely die afore the morn, for by thy beauty is mine heart all torn. Kind fairy of the forest, hear my plea. Become my wife, yea, give thyself to me. Alas, Sir Peter, this must needs be said. It is forbidden for my race to wed. We cannot leave this forest, but if you desire mine heart, then my love shall be true, and every day till death my peace you'll find. I'll never your embrace refuse, nor be unkind. Shall I not receive one small boon, sweet fay? I'm just as worthy as my liege, I'll say. A faithful friend and squire I've been for years. Give me what I've earned, leave me not in tears. Yea, by thy mercy mine own life was spared. Of noble birth you are this day declared. Will I become a match with my good lord in all things? Years now I've in troth adored his peerless combat skills and lightning wit. Lo, this disloyalty I'll not forget. 
thou hast, I wot, the guile of Eden Snake, and would in moments few unjustly take all of my valued talents? Oh, the grief! No friend of mine thou art, but a vile thief. Nay, sir, I'd fain remove each boundary betwixt us, to have true equality. Well spoke. What second thing dost thou now want? Yea, verily thou art a blessed font. My last wish, like my liege's wish before, must be for love. Of this I would implore, that ere a fortnight time on this earth had passed, I'd find true love, and be content at last. If I love her and she love me as well, then wondrous magic be your fairy spell. May Christ in heaven bless our blissful hearts till death's keen sickle doth cause us to part. Your soul burns bright as summer's sun at noon. In time, I, Sylvia, shall grant your boon. What's this? Some stirring in the moonlit air. Yea, nature's mystic powers round me flare. Strong elemental energies doth surge. As promised, mine exquisite wings emerge. Now hearken both. Unless you fairy sight this forest like a labyrinth at night, you must ride home with me where I shall make fine nectar wine and rich ambrosia cake. Come sunrise, all of your cares shall be gone. You'll both be lords and eke well loved anon. Back to scene one, Peter's great hall. Upon returning home, Sir Peter found his coiffers quite full and left to us down. He called forth minstrels, bakers, and eke thralls to hastily prepare his manor halls. So might the neighboring land's nobility enjoy a feast and drain a keg or three. The hall, stonework walls are decorated with the knight's colors and coat of arms. A table has been set with all kinds of good food. Roasted poultry, fresh fruits, meat pies, and cakes. Overseeing the festivities, Peter sits upon a throne with Simon beside him. A goodly fortune we possess indeed. I pray you, Peter, pass that luscious mead. Mayhap thou art confused, my drunken squire. This wealth belongs to me, else I'm a liar. <sighs> the virtue of humility, forsooth, is difficult to grasp by minds of youth. Be under my wing for a few years more. Your condescension I need not endure. You're both be lords, spake Selvia the Fay. Did honey wine make you forget that day? Enough! Bring forth my supper. Afterward, I might forget this argument occurred. If thou rebellest still, I'll my guards call, and thou shalt chained be to a dungeon wall. Doth our past friendship count for naught? Nay, lad. Yet, lordship never can be bought or simply wished for. These things must be earned. About fey magic, I am not concerned. My wealth is manna from the one true God. Denying that shall bring his judgment rod. And if mine ears catch more complaints from thee, thou wilt be cast out. This I guarantee. Forgiveness, sir. My words have been uncouth. Exit Simon. Peter walks over to stand by Lady Gabrielle. Prithee, Lady Gabrielle, why so aloof? Go, join the crowd in all their <laughs> drunken mirth. Enjoy my gift, this paradise on earth. A sampling eye of celestial delights, but not a substitute to reach the heights of Jehovah's realm. Thy soul must be pure and free from greed. Then his grace shall outpour. <sighs> Such joy I've not known since I was a lad. And all my follies are forgotten and glad. Forget them not. Let they come around again. Then thine heart shall be in hell's domain. Oh, don't be such a worrywart, my friend. No knight of God e'er reached an evil end. Ho, oh, lords and ladies, let our cares this day be trodden underfoot. My minstrels, play. The dance begins. To eat, drink, and be merry, these three things are not sins, yet indulging in them brings regret, since that disturbs men's spirit selves. And men should not cease prayer, nor hide on shelves of dark forgetfulness. Their godly thoughts. They all should quaff Christ's wine to cleanse sin's blots.
Act 2, Scene 2, A Small Area Beside a Wooded Lake. Enter Simon. And later that night, his task completed, Squire Simon, thinking himself mistreated, sought some relief within the moonlit wild, and there he felt calm, carefree, like a child. A paradisical place is this. I can me thinks find not a greater bliss. There's magic in the very air I breathe. Oh, gracious gods, I wish never to leave. Enter Miriam from the water, bearing a wooden cup. Sounds. Neath the surface, a maid's form doth rise. Simon backs away fearfully. Hold, Simon. I've for thee a priceless prize. Please, taste of my wine. Wish for nothing more. The name of thy drink. Tell me, I implore. Tis freedom called, fermented to release all souls from darkness and grant endless peace. Before thee lies two doors. Here is one key. Receive the chalice and its prophecy. Simon takes the cup and gazes into it. What's this? Reflected on the wine within, I spy a young man who could be my twin. But for his woolen cloak and hooded head, no mansion his. From royal life banished, no loyal servants, for he's peasant kind. Nay, this be not the fate I had in mind. Here, that ensourced wine I do reject. Miriam takes back her cup. Man's free will by God's law I must respect. But drink thou must, ere this dream be ended. Hark, comes now one from heaven descended. <clears throat> Here the ground opens before Simon with an awesome spot of flame. Enter Mammon, a costly robed figure bearing a wooden cup, wrought of shining gold and beset with jewels through the frame leafed opening. Thou shalt find my wine much more to thy tastes. Drink to the dregs, lad, leave no drop to waste. The spirit's name is Mammon. From her drink, bliss doth dwell. But twill be gone in a wink. What dost thou see when thou dost gaze in there? Simon receives the golden cup. A lord, with a lady passing fair. His home a manor is, with a grand throne. Victorious in battle, and well known. Is this my future I now look upon? Wait. Some decisions can never be withdrawn. <sighs> Simon sips from the cup. Ah, here's a heady wine, with a pleasing sense. Aye. Waff it down. Ease all thy discontent. Simon finishes the cup. Exit Miriam and Mammon, vanishing magically. Simon awakens anon, finding himself alone within his bedchamber. <sighs> what were those strange sights? Part of a mad dream? Those visions, are they more than they might seem? Act 2, Scene 3, A Woodland Clearing. Time passed, and now, yon full-waxed August moon, watch the young couple, lured by love's sweet tune, steal through this wood to fan romance's fire, view Angelina and her smitten squire. Enter Angelina and Simon from opposite sides of the wood. Though dressed in simple peasant garb, Angelina is uncommonly beautiful. From her nocturnal surroundings, disturbing sounds emanate. Angelina produces a small kitchen knife. Who's there? I'll have you know I'm not afraid, and be forewarned, I hold a deadly blade. Be still, thou earthly seraph, have no fear. These shadows hide only Simon, my dear. Come to mine arms, my lord. This deathly gloom doth darken mine eyes with thoughts of doom. Oh, why did you choose such a phantom-filled blade? For despite the heat, my flesh feels chilled. Thou speakest out of ignorance. This wood contains many things which are oft misunderstood. Yea, though this forest be at times maligned, it gathers my lost thoughts and calms my mind. Enchant me, it doth, in this pale blue light. The moon above is fully waxed this night, an omen of ill fortune, that is said. Methinks it brings good fortune now instead. The full moon makes a sane man mind its prey. Those wraith-like rays drain all its wits away and leaves him naught but a dumb, brutish beast. I am neither astrologer nor priest, and of the universe know only this. There shines one wandering star that I can't resist. And which, pray tell, is that? Ah, Mars, mayhap. Tis Venus. She seeks mine heart to entrap. Angelina pulls back slightly. My lusty squire, an inconvenient truth prevents such wild advances. For in sooth, my blood's not noble, so cease this love talk. I was once, verily, of common stock. Tell me, how came you then to serve a knight? Ten years ago, Sir Peter, all bedight in shining mail, rode past my mother's farm. 
took interest in me, and with practiced charm convinced my mother I'd lead a good life raised in a noble house. He had no wife or son to call his own, and wished, perchance, a lad to mentor. The art of the lance, the sword, the pen, and horsemanship were all made known to me. Yet, for all of this, a thrall was I, and naught on earth could change my fate. Not even spells can earn respect create. Your lord doth much provide, yet you want more? I would feel blessed to live no longer poor. And ever be Peter's servant? Fie. Oh, hear me, gods of yonder star-strewn sky. This miserable mortal hereby swears he shall escape that black-souled tyrant's lair. How brazenly his squire speaks. Why do you offer so harsh a critique? Because that fiend doth make a slave of me. Once, like a father I thought him to be, mayhaps, but now I see his devilish face. That monstrous farce, bedecked in jewels and lace, live not for his ungodly pride. But judgment day shall come. Then woe betide these cads whose self-aggrandizement pursue. Sweet lips should never such vile venom spew. Let them this night no longer speak such things, and rather pray that hope tomorrow brings. Enter footpads. A flower rare, my lads, a bloom at night. And ripe for plucking, if I guess aright. Yet this fine sapling seeks to bar our path. Simon draws his sword. A disposition for the stripling path. Begone, ye ruffians, and thereby live. Though merciful Christ may your sins forgive, mine arm shall punish them with deadly force. Then we'll meet thy blade with our own, of course. The footpads draw their swords. In troth, the peril ye fools are in, ye wot not of. Now flee, and save your skins. To mine eyes, a young nobleman you are, with blue blood, born beneath a happy star. At fortune's door now stand we. Don't ye see? Some lord for his return won't stingy be. <laughs> Crossing paths with me ye shall regret. We are indeed by moonlight most ill met. A melee ensues, and Angelina hides herself to avoid injury. Simon duels well and is victorious, but suffers a small wound. My lady, Angelina, hath thou fled? There's no threat. Thy attackers now lie dead. Angelina emerges from her place of hiding. Ah, come to me, my sweet, swift-footed fay. Thou tremblest. Wast thou harmed in any way? No, merely frightened. Oh, your arm doth bleed. Tis nothing. For a surgeon, there is no need. Know this. I'd suffer wounds from ten score blades ere one uncouth brute hand on me was laid. I don't doubt you. Though we met but last night, I in my kirtle, you and your armor bright. Yet this sad fact, sir, cannot be ignored. By law, a peasant shall not wed a lord. No peasant, thou. You are to me a queen. To you, mine eyes have never beauty seen. Your countenance is brighter than the sun. Refuse me, and my soul shall come undone. Squire, I will hold your doting gaze with mine. Your heart's love offering I'll not decline. Alas, this all may be a dream, I fear. Be silent, lest you and I wake, my dear. Act 2, Scene 4, Peter's Great Hall. Servants are here performing a variety of simple duties as Peter and Simon privately converse. And now Sir Peter doth ask his once friend the secret thoughts reveal and strife to end. Thy mind, t'would seem, bears burdens as of late. Share these dark thoughts with me. Reduce their weight. Nay, I cannot. And do not press me, sir. If not thy lord, in whom wouldst thou confer? Thou hast retained thy station, so then why wouldst thou, it seems, our friendship's bond deny? Tell me what ails thee. At the very least, let me now summon forth for thee a priest. I suffer from a mental malady so agonizing, in troth that shan't be soon soured by your, or any man's, advice. <laughs> Cease thy sad riddling, friend. That shall suffice. In love thou hast now fallen, as that sprite did promise on that mystery-filled night. Tis true. The grief I feel is born of love. Though pure my lady is, 
like heaven's dove. It is a cursed love, I feel. Alas, she's sought by a rich man of higher class. Thy situation, my poor squire, is grim. For men of high estate risk life and limb to soon attain that which they so desire. How fair is this prized lass thou dost admire? She's of surpassing fairness, my good lord. Seraphic beauty, I swear by my sword. <sighs> Fain am I to hear a romantic tale. Fret not, I'm sure that true love shall prevail. But what of Angelina? Hath that girl, with eyes of sapphire and teeth of pearl, agreed to sup with me yet? Oh, my lad, I'm so besotted with her, I'll go mad, I fear, if she denies me one more day. My lord, I don't mean to cause you dismay, but please, abandon this path you pursue. That maid is taken, she's not yours to woo. Where, squire? Stand not betwixt me and the one I've chosen. Mark me, my will shall be done. This Angelina is engaged, my friend. I prithee, let these passions of yours end. Her heart shall never be yours, I'm afraid. That lovesick mind methinks you're not dissuade. She would so nonchalantly cast aside a noble's life to be some peasant's bride? Bring that dull wench before her lord at once. Well, off with thee, thou idle-headed dunce. You have the sylph, and her love cannot fail. Aye, Sylvia. But she's bound to her veil, for reasons only known to her strange folk. Appears she does when her name I invoke. When I depart, she into shade subsides, and with nocturnal beastly things resides. Thus, that wild nymph could never be my fate. Fetch Angelina. Here I'll for thee wait. Act 2, Scene 5, Peter's Great Hall. Peter is seen alone and brooding. Hours later, sleep and death will fill at last. It's final duty in this life, alas. Enter Simon with Angelina. Bright angel, quake not so before thy liege. I seek not thine heart's fortress to besiege, but only to converse with thee, I swear. Who is betrothed to thee, my lady fair? Is he as rich as I, his arm as strong? <laughs> Surrounded is he by a servant throng? My lord, for all your power and stores of gold, the man I love is greater, truth be told. Squire, slay this base-born man of whom she speaks. Let that deed be yours. I'm the one you seek. Perfidious cur! Thou hast Satan's heart! Peter draws his sword. You cannot win. I'm your match in this art. Simon draws his sword. <laughs> Unlikely! Soon thou shalt be thrown in chains, and in my dungeon suffer untold pains. Nay, vengeance shall be mine. Once you are dead, my wife and I shall rule in your stead. With that, Peter and Simon engage in a vicious duel, and ultimately being consumed by hate, each other slay. Angelina weeps over Simon's bloody corpse. Tis done. Sir Peter and his hapless squire both ended tragically in hot ire. Their love, by which these fighters gravely swore, now stains the steel of their once gleaming swords. And pulling here, their crimson life congeals. Thus death laughs at men with their high ideals. These two, though one serves while the other ruled, prove not nobility but equal fools. Because they fail to quell their wrath and lust, all of their lives' bright hopes are turned to dust. My tale is through, there is no more to tell. So now, with heavy heart, I bid farewell.
The Bard's Tale, written by Joseph Koslerich and Jamie Allen Horton, performed by the Janus Players Club of Cape Cod Community College. Mark Stone voiced Israfel the Bard. Jamie Allen Horton voiced Peter the Knight. Remy Waglin voiced Simon the Squire. Joya Sabatinelli voiced Sylvia the Sylph. Andrea Harris voiced Angelina the Peasant. Nicole Taylor voiced Gabrielle the Good Lady. Lauren Helena Johnson voiced Miriam the Naiad. Emily Entwistle voiced Mammon the Demon. Jeremy Hill and Eddie Marceau voiced the Footpads. And I, Cameron Hall, play the sound effects for you here on WKKL. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>